Hola amigos, están viendo en Luxus y estamos nuevamente en el Kennedy Space Center. Esta vez invitados por la NASA para una ocasión muy especial. Vamos a tener una entrevista exclusiva con Dain Tani, un astronauta que ha viajado varias veces al espacio en el transbordador e inclusive estuvo en la Estación Espacial Internacional. Así que, comencemos. Dan, uh, you come from engineering education and training. Uh, what made you decide to become an astronaut? Well, I think there are two types of people. People that really want to become an astronaut, they'll do anything to become an astronaut. And then the other type of people, they'll do anything to not be an astronaut. And so, uh, for me, being an astronaut is like the ultimate dream. It's uh, fantastic. You get to fly in space and do all the cool stuff. So. But I never really thought about seriously becoming an astronaut um, uh, growing up. And I just liked engineering. I liked how things work. And I turned it, my first job turned out to be in the aerospace industry. And uh, so I was doing the things that I was really interested in doing, which is building machines and mechanisms. Um, but it turns out I was doing it for the space program. And I got to meet a few astronauts. And once I met a few astronauts, I realized, wow, it's a job. I mean, I can apply for the job, you know, and I'm. I went to a good school and I got good grades and, and I could put a decent application together. So I threw my application in the pile and I got just very lucky to uh, get selected. So I believe that one of the most amazing moments uh, must be the takeoff. Uh, how a world uh, does it feel? Uh, uh, launching is uh, incredible. First of all, it's the moment you've been waiting for for years and years and years. And so part of it is like the big moment in your life, one of these big moments in your life that you anticipate, you think about, and it's finally there. Maybe it's like walking down the aisle, getting married, or being in a big football match or something. So it, there's that sort of anticipation. And then once the rocket starts going, you know, we have a job to make sure that everything on the rocket is working well, okay? So it knows where it's going and it's operating perfectly. And so we have a job to do to monitor the rocket and make sure it's working well. But also we're being shaken like crazy because we are being pulled into space. And that's what it feels like. It feels like somebody's pulling you into space and you're pushed back into your seat. Things are shaking around like crazy. You know, we have a job to do to monitor the systems, but we also know that we're uh, in a very uh, unique place and, and we're given an opportunity to something that very few people have been able to do. And uh, on the space shuttle, at least, it's very rough for about two minutes. And then these things called solid rocket boosters come off. And then it's very smooth, but it's a smooth pushing on your, pushing you into your seat harder and harder and harder. Eventually, it gets to be three times your body weight pressing you down into the seat. And it kind of becomes hard to breathe. And it's, it's hard to reach things. But uh, it's not a problem. It's more, we're not disturbed by that. We know that that's going to happen. But it's exciting. I mean, it's really exciting. And so the whole process is uh, something we practice and think about and anticipate. And so once you're really launching, it's really exciting. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, um, and the, another must be the re-entry into the era of fear. Uh -huh. When the seal of the space program become literally as a fireball. Yes. <laughs> right. Can you describe these minutes? Sure. Well. Um, Again, sort of like launching, landing, or re-entry is something we practice over and over and over again. And so, and we practice them in simulators, and so we know what the computers are supposed to be doing, and we know what the gauges are supposed to be doing. So we're really focused on, is the space shuttle doing what it's supposed to be doing? The space shuttle is a very gentle re-entry to the atmosphere, okay? It, uh, it flies like a glider to the, to the ground and it's being slowed down by all of the air that, is, that it, it is running into. And so uh, it's very gentle and it's, uh, it, there's not a lot of acceleration Gs on us. Okay, so it's, it, it, but however, when we've been in zero G, it feels like a lot, but, but it's, it's, uh, it's, very, it's fairly gentle. And again, we're really making sure that the spacecraft is doing what it's supposed to do. Now on the Soyuz, which is the Russian way to get up and down uh, from the station, when it comes in like a cap as a capsule, it's much more violent. And so I, I have not ridden the Soyuz, but my friends that have uh, ridden in it said it's like you're in a car accident. 
you're being thrown around and shaken around. You're exposed to up to six Gs, uh, and, and sometimes you're up, exposed to up to nine Gs, which is really a lot of uh, 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 accelerations. And, uh, and so that's supposed to be a much more rough ride. Uh, entering the atmosphere on the shuttle is a very smooth ride, um, but of course we know it's very complicated. I came back, uh, both of my flights we came home in the daytime, so I didn't see the big fireball out the window, but of course it's still there. Uh, but, but during the daytime, you can't really see it as well as at night. Wow, very nice. After traveling through space, has your lifestyle changed somehow? Has my life changed? Uh, really, the, I would, the biggest thing that changed for me after going into space is I uh, got to see the Earth as a whole, as, a, as, as one unit. When we're in space, we're only 250 miles, 400 kilometers above the, the surface of the Earth, so we're not that far away. But we don't see uh, political boundaries. We don't see the differences between the countries. We don't see the differences between religions or ideologies. We just see the beautiful Earth, and we see mountains and lakes and coastline. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to see the Earth. And so when I came back, um, I felt like my proudest membership in my life is to be a citizen of this planet. That's my really proudest moment, so, uh, or my proudest association. And I really wish we could bring everybody to space right. to feel that, uh, to get away from the sort of everyday problems that we're having here and look at the Earth as a whole and think what a fantastic planet we live on. How, how lucky we all are to live on such a beautiful planet. Yes, it's, it's true. Um, uh, can you foreshadow what mankind may achieve in conquering space? Uh, well, I'm convinced that we as humans uh, need to explore. I think that's what we do. Uh, we just need, uh, we need the uh, governments and companies uh, to support that because it's very expensive. And so I'm positive we're going to get past the Earth and low Earth orbit. We're going to uh, eventually go to Mars. It's going to take a while. It's a hard, that's a very hard thing to do, but we'll go to Mars. And once we have that uh, figured out, I think going to other planets uh, is not going to be too far away. We'll have to decide exactly why we want to do that and what, we're, what, what the reason would be. Um, but uh, one of the biggest reasons is that's what we do. You know, we go over the hill and see what's over the hill. And we, we go across the ocean to see what's on the other side of the ocean. And so we're going to go up there and we're going to see what it's like to be on Mars and um, eventually much further out. So I'm convinced that's our path. We're just taking little steps right now, uh, but we'll get there. Okay. And um, um, how can the guest ah. uh, can meet an astronaut? Sure. When you, if you're, uh, uh, when you come to the Kennedy Space, uh, Space Center, when you come to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Center, um, the, there's always a, a, an astronaut here, resident every day, that uh, goes and does public speeches, and, and uh, you can have lunch with that astronaut, and there's uh, signing opportunities. Uh, there's always an astronaut around every day, and uh, so and it's uh, easy enough to go uh, hear him or her speak and uh, ask them questions and get your picture taken, hopefully. And so uh, we, we make sure here at this visitor center to make uh, the astronauts is as available as, as we can and uh, uh, so that you can really feel what uh, or really identify that uh, astronauts are real people and uh, that's that's what happened to me when I realized astronauts are real people I thought you know what maybe I can become an astronaut okay. well uh, time flies but yes uh, okay the last question Star Trek or Star Wars <laughs> somebody just <laughs> asked me that question <laughs> disappointingly to most people that answer ask me that question, I am not a science fiction fan, so uh, I'm am I don't care. Uh, I saw I saw much I saw Star Wars when it came out; it was cool, and uh, I've seen a couple episodes of Star Trek, but uh, I can't choose. I'm not a fan of uh, I'm not a big fan of science fiction, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> well, on behalf, on behalf of the of audience and mine, thank you very much. For Thank your you. Time and your it's, experience. Uh, it's my pleasure. My pleasure. I look forward to my visit to Argentina whenever that's going to be. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um,